This QGIS tutorial will help you get started using QGIS 3. This video isn't meant for advanced users. Instead, it covers all the basics like symbolizing, editing, and using print layouts. Let's dive right in. QGIS is built on the shoulders of the open source GIS community. This means it's free to download and use without a cost. Not only is it available for Windows, but you can also use it with other major operating systems like Linux and Mac. To download QGIS, head on over to the main website for the latest. Check out the description below for more information. All you have to do is download the latest stable release for QGIS and install it. It's a really easy process, and all you have to do is follow the instructions. My first tip for learning QGIS is to have some great practice data. I suggest that you try out the open data from Natural Earth. So let's go to the Natural Earth website, where you can find the data. Now click the download link in the main menu, which will take you to the download page. My suggestion is to download the Quick Start Kit. It's convenient because it comes with all the data and a QGIS project file with all the data in it. All right, it looks like it's downloading. So if you want to follow along, then you should try to download this data beforehand. Check out the link in the description below for where to download Natural Earth data. Okay, so now that we've downloaded QGIS and some data, let's take a look at the download folder with the Natural Earth data. So the file that we want to open is the QGS file. Go ahead and double click that file. This is going to open QGIS with all the data neatly organized for you. Now QGIS has loaded. I want to show you the user interface. First, the map canvas is at the center. The map canvas displays all of your map features. If you scroll the wheel on your mouse up and down, it will zoom in and out, and holding the wheel on your mouse down will pan left, right, up, and down. Secondly, we have the data browser panel on the left, which is for browsing through your GIS data. It's like Windows Explorer for GIS data for adding layers to your map canvas. You can also move and dock panels on either side. It's completely customizable and up to you where you want to dock it. Finally, at the top of your application are your toolbars. Toolbars are sets of tools with a specific purpose. For instance, there are toolbars for attribute data, digitizing, labeling, map navigation, vector, plugins, and more. You can also undock and move them anywhere in your application. If you want to create points, lines, and polygons, then you can make a new shapefile to store these features. First, start by right-clicking the folder you want to create the shapefile in the browser panel. Next, select New, and then Shapefile. Next, choose the feature geometry as points, lines, or polygons. Finally, select the encoding type and coordinate reference system. Make sure to give your shapefile a name as well. Keep in mind there are other types of GIS formats for storing data like geo packages. Now click OK. If you want your layer to go into your map, simply drag and drop it from your folder into your map. After this, you'll be able to see it in your layer list. If you want to change your symbology, QGIS has a shortcut to access the layer styling. By clicking the Layer Styling button, the Symbology panel opens on the right-hand side. In the Layer Styling panel, this is how you can change the symbology styles. You can also create points, lines, and polygon symbols by adding several together. In the Labels tab, you can decide which label styles to use. You get stylish labeling options in QGIS 3. For example, you can use halos, transparency, and drop shadows. You can also adjust the transparency of features on the map. Optionally, you can save it as a style file if you want to use it later. Print layouts are like a second interface in QGIS, where you can create professional quality maps. It's also where you add common map elements like north arrows, scale bars, and titles. First, click Project. Then select New Print Layout. Next, enter a name for your layout. Click Add Item and Add Map. 
Then drag an area in your canvas. Use Edit and Move Content to pan in the map window. In the Item Properties tab, you can set the map scale, extent, and even rotation of the map. By clicking Add Item and Add Scale Bar, it adds a scale bar. There are also options for adding labels, legends, and north arrows, so you can test what everything does. It's important to practice a bit in the print layout so you can get familiar with it. Honestly, it takes a bit of time to get a hang of things. Now that we have a print layout, how do you export it to a PDF or an image format? Before you export, you should know that you can also change paper size, orientation, units, and background color in the composition panel. If you want to export a PDF map in QGIS, click Layout and Export as PDF. If you export as SVG, this gives you the option to import the map in Adobe Illustrator. You can also export maps in a wide range of formats like JPEG, PNG, and TIFF. You can access GIS processing tools by clicking Processing and Toolbox. If you want to find a specific tool, the easiest way is to search for it. The search bar at the top helps you locate the tools you need. There's actually more than 600 available GIS tools, so this comes in pretty handy. But you can also search in each toolbox, including cartography, database, file tools, interpolation, network analysis, raster, and vector. The last three toolboxes are GDAL, Grass GIS and Saga GIS, which are not native to QGIS, but they can come in pretty handy with some specialized geo algorithms. QGIS plugins give you extra firepower beyond the traditional processing tools. Plugins are one of the main reasons why QGIS 3 is such a powerful GIS software. There are about 500 plugins available in the QGIS repository. The number of plugins is growing every day, so it's probably higher than this number. If you want to download a plugin, here's how to do it. Go to Plugins and Manage and Install Plugins. This will open the Plugin Manager where you can download, update, activate, and deactivate them. For example, some plugins allow you to use CAD tools, geocoding, and profile tools. Whether you're looking to build web maps or perform image classification, QGIS plugins can boost its functionality. If you're looking to add a nice satellite imagery or a topographic base map, I'll show you how to do this using the Quick Map Services plugin. Go to Plugins and Manage and Install Plugins. Now, search for Quick Map Services in the Plugin Manager. Then, click Install Plugin. This takes just a couple seconds. After the plugin installs, it will be available to you in the top menu bar. Now go to Web and Quick Map Services plugin. By selecting a layer from the drop down menu, you can add it to the map canvas. For example, you can add OpenStreetMap. If you want to add Google and Bing base maps, you can find it in the search bar. Type in Google. It might take a bit of time to find it. But all you have to do is add in your map. Another neat feature in QGIS is 3D visualization. In this tutorial, we're just going to do some very basic 3D mapping. First, you'll need a digital elevation model. Be careful though for the size of data, as it can be a bit sluggish in QGIS. Once you have elevation data in your map, click View and New 3D Map View. By holding down the middle mouse button, you can tilt your map in 3D. There's also the option to adjust the 3D configuration settings like vertical scale and tile resolution. By adding your ortho image to the map canvas, it will drape over your elevation data. This gives it a realistic 3D model view. In this QGIS guide, we covered all the essentials, from adding GIS data to editing it, 
From symbolizing to exporting maps, I hope you enjoyed our guide to QGIS. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.